Turn in your Bibles to the book of Ephesians, please, or on your phone, whatever the case may be. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. So Paul here is writing to the, to the book, of, I mean, to the church of Ephesus, and he he says that he heard their faith in the Lord Jesus and, and their love for all the saints. Um, so it's interesting that Paul, he ties together in a few different places, but he ties together faith in the Lord Jesus and love for, love for the saints. Um, you know, faith in the Lord Jesus, if, if somebody says that they have faith in Jesus, but they don't have but I don't see love for people, then I start to wonder about their faith in Jesus. Because what Paul is saying here, he says like, hey, I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for the saints. And what he's saying is, is like, I heard about this, and it wasn't just their faith in the Lord Jesus. It was their love for all the saints too. And that's when he knew that the faith was authentic. He knew the faith was authentic whenever, they, whenever he heard about the love for the people in combination with the faith, for, faith in Jesus. So he says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Um, you know, Paul, writing here, he had, it's kind of like he's writing to this church and, and he's, he, he pastored this church for like three years, and then he, some years later he's saying like, hey, I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for the saints. And so it would almost be like somebody that came here like in 2011 or so, and they said, hey, um, and they wrote to us in 2019 and said, hey, I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for the saints. He's saying that, you know, hey, I mean, he knew these people, but he says, I heard of your faith and your love. Now, Let's say that um, if, you know, I used to go to, a, I mean, you know, a while back, I, whenever I was, uh, when I was growing up a teenager, you know, Jackson used to get these concerts, man. We got some good concerts. And then, but I remember going to one concert that stood out. And, you know, these, a lot of these bands and stuff that our parents, you know, I, I grew up in a youth group, you know, they said that you played the music backwards, it was, you know, they were talking to the devil and all this craziness, but then you listen to the music now and you're like, man, those guys were singing love songs, <laughs> and I mean, like, I don't understand Kiss because they painted up like they were evil, and then they sang love songs, anyway, but, but one of the Kiss came to Jackson, and this was without the makeup, which is not important, but they weren't as weird. But he, but they're they're playing, and at some point the band took a break, and Gene Simmons is the bass guitarist, and he's out there all by himself, and and he's got this thing on the end of his guitar, and every time he strikes a note, it shoots fireworks out, you know. Well, this was their first stop on the tour, and they had not done it, so I guess they were working some kinks out, but he made the mistake of pointing the pointing his guitar straight up in the air. And when he hit it, it shot up. It hit the speakers. Well, he goes running, tearing out. Like, I mean, because the speakers were, looked like they were going to fall. But I was there. Now, if you told me you were there, and I said, man, did you not laugh when Gene Simmons had to run across the stage to run away from the speaker, and you didn't know what I was talking about? Or if I said, man... It's amazing how smoky the Colosseum can be. Like, if you didn't know that, or you'd say, man, did your ears ring after the concert? I mean, like, if, if, you didn't, if you didn't do all that, I wonder, were you there? And what Paul is saying is, is he's saying, listen, I know what it looks like. When somebody puts their faith in Jesus, I know what it looks like. When somebody puts their authentic faith in Jesus, I know what it looks like, and it looks like they're going to love on people. That's, that's what he's saying. I know, I, I know, I know the, 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 the geography of this. I, I know about all this. Um, now, 
He knows that that washed and cleansed people of all their sins. He knows that that renewed them. He knows that that justified them. It gave them access, gave them access to grace. And it's because it's what putting faith in Jesus does for everybody. For every person that puts, the, puts their faith in Jesus. So I'm not trying to beat anybody over the head. But what I'm saying is, it's like if you're telling me that you have faith in Jesus, but then you're cussing people out, I wonder. And I mean, it, you know, it's kind of like... um. You know, somebody goes in their prayer closet for like three hours, and then they, they you know, they, they've been with God, you know, and then they come out and, you know, threaten to beat their kid to death. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, a, it's, it's like you know, well, is it, you know, were you with God, or who were you with? But anyway, so he says that he heard of his love for Jesus and love for the, love for the saints. Now, he says, I do not cease to give thanks to, for you, making mention of you in my prayers. So Paul is praying a prayer of thanksgiving for them. Okay? And, and he's doing this continually. And why would you have to pray that continually? Well, every, you, you ought to be getting more of a revelation of God every day. Every week, every month, every year, you shouldn't think of God exactly the same this year as you did last year. You should know. You should have have it more revealed to you. And so that's what he's saying in verse seventeen. He says that the that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. So remember that is in the knowledge of Him, so that it is. That we, it is that, that we learn more, that we have more revealed. And just as a side note, you know that church is a lot of things. Like I'm talking about the gathering of us together. It's a lot of things. Um, and so this is not all it is. But one of the things it is, is that a bunch of people getting together and, and showing each other what's been revealed to them by the Holy Spirit that benefits everybody else. And so it's all of us getting together and 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 bumping shoulders and 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 just you know that we're we're all kind of getting getting more and then we go out in the world and we ought to have such a um we ought to get so enthused and the world ought to see us as being as being like hey man something's different about them they're supernatural something is happening and they ought to want to come to church because like hey they're different you know but uh, too often we look just like everybody else. But that was um, a side note. So that God would reveal, so we want God to reveal to us who he really is, okay? Now, what would, what would you do if, if, you know, you put your faith in the Lord Jesus? At what, what are you going to do after you put your faith in Jesus and you're loving on people? What is the requirement for you to do? What is, the, what is required of you? What is, what, requir what is required is that you put your faith in Jesus and know that he took care of it all. You're not going to earn your way. You're not going to do anything to gain. You're not going to do anything to gain favor. You're not going to, you, you know, you can't read your Bible enough. I mean, like, you know, wh where are you going to put the, the line there? Like, you know, well, if I'm going to do it on performance and I say, well, I'm going to have enough quiet time, I'm going to have enough devotional time, like how much time is that? Is it different for you than it is for me? Because, like, what, I mean, where's the, where's the marker? And here's the deal. You know why we, we want the marker? Because, man, we want a formula. We want something to go off of. Like, man, I need a plan. I need something, you know, I need to know. But here's the deal. God doesn't work it out for you just like he did for me. He doesn't do it. He, I mean, like, you can, I can quote the same scriptures you do. I can do everything exactly the same. And God will reveal himself differently to me than he, than he does to you. That's just the way it is. 
he doesn't i mean if you look jesus i mean look he healed people by he healed people by 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 praying for them and just speaking to them and then you know he spit on the ground and made mud and packed it in this guy's eye to make it to make him see you know i'd rather have just like hey just pray for me i don't want the mud but that's not the way he did it but he didn't do the same he didn't do the same thing so we're going to live the rest of our life or what we're going to do is as a result is we're going to live the rest of our life getting a revelation of him we're going to live the rest of our life getting to know him more now do you know like if you um if you're carrying like like a a glass of or say you carry a full cup of coffee right and it's like one of those tall cups and you like have to put your arm like this and you're going it like sloshes you know and then it's just going to like spill out and it's going to you're going to get it on you it's, it's a bad move but you see you're going to get it on you and you're going to get it and if you start bumping into people it's going to slosh out on everybody else well that's what the love of god is that's the love of god that you ought to be everybody you bump into they ought to be getting some sloshed on them like it ought to be dripping off of you it ought to be it, it ought to be that it's just satur- that it's saturating you so much that if somebody comes around you and they get in, if somebody just gets in the the presence of you that it drips off on them that's the way it, that's the way it should be so we we, we want to know about him so you know when paul was on the damascus road and he and he got knocked off he got knocked off and he's and he's on the ground he says two things who are you lord and what would you have me do so those are your two questions who are you that's the most important question who are you lord is you get a revelation about that and what would you have me do what's your plan for me what what, what do i what do i do from here and we're supposed to be getting revelation now um you know well, why do we, you know, why do we do things? Why do we help people? Why do we do it? Because that's just an overflow of, of, of us learning about him because God is love. I mean, what, um, why, do we, why do we read our Bible? Well, because the Bible gives us, the Bible gives us um, the pictures of how God operates um i don't know that this is the best example but the bible almost um when we were in class this morning john was um teaching he said that you know that used to most people were illiterate and so they learned like about the bible and things with pictures and so they they got things well it it hit me like you know that's kind of what the bible is the bible is us getting pictures of how God operates it's still shots but you learning the revelation of who God is that's live video that's live that's real time that's that's real time well that's the authentic Christian life right there that we that he's revealing that he's confirming that he's guiding eliminating now um notice whenever he says that um Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, that he doesn't say that I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and how well you follow rules. He didn't say, I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and I heard that you memorized Leviticus. You're good. He doesn't, he doesn't say that, but too often that's what we kind of give people the idea of. Like they come down, they pray the sinner's prayer, and then we say, hey, we got a class that we need you to take on um, Tuesday, and it's about, um, we're going to teach you the rules. We're going to teach you the rules of, of what this is about when the whole thing is about love. And, um, whenever, we, and whenever we get a revelation of God, um. what i'm we we have this thing and we may not say it out loud but we have this thing that we think that if we are in a place of strength if we and it's our perceived strength if we are in a place to where man i have been doing everything i know to do i have been doing and man god's fixing to come through i mean i'm doing i'm doing good I'm doing good. Well, whenever you 
you, we think that's whenever God moves on our behalf, or that's when we think that, that we're, you know, we're waiting for God for something, and we think that's going to attract him to move faster. When what we find out is, because there's not a formula, what we find out is, is it's actually whenever we're in a place of weakness that he, that he moves. And by weakness, that's what it, man, listen, I almost didn't preach this because I just didn't like it, but anyway, but it's not weakness. And so if I say weakness, I want you to hear this, okay, because I kept typing weakness, and then I didn't like it after I looked at it because it's not a place of weakness. It's a place of humility. There's a, humility would be, a, would be the much better word, but, um, you know, in Psalm 25, 9, it says, the humble he guides in justice and the humble he teaches his way. James 4, 6 says, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Um, now, we can be weak. We can be weak in many forms, okay? And by weakness, um, it could be that, you know, we have weakness of knowledge where we just don't know. We could have weakness of strength where we're getting just tired waiting for God. We could have weakness of devotion. And, and that's whenever we think that if we read the Bible three hours a day, we pray three hours, you know, I sent extra money to the church, I'm devoted, um, you know. I, but then what about the day that you didn't feel so devoted? And, you know, you're riding to, you're riding to work and you turn the radio to the Christian station, but it was boring. So you put it on Z106, and you're listening to some good music, and then what are you going to do that day? Because now, I mean, now I feel like I'm not devoted. I feel like I'm not, I feel like I'm not, you know, well, you know, I didn't earn my way today. I didn't do right. I didn't whatever, but you assume that when you're at your devotional best, then God will show up. But let me tell you something. God divides people on two things and two things only. Proud and humble. Those are his, that, that is the line. You want to know the line? It's pride and humility. It's not behavior. And that can be very frustrating for people that are following all the rules that are doing right it can be very frustrating if you are a rule oriented person because what happens is is that you you're following the rules and your buddy's not but your buddy gets blessed with what you're praying for and it doesn't make sense well what you got to do is you got to figure out am i in a place of pride because i'm proud of how much i've done i'm proud of how i'm proud of how well i'm living i'm proud of listen and there's nothing wrong with that as, as long as you're doing it in the humility of Christ, of knowing that you're not doing it, of knowing that it's Him, if you're depending, if you're depending on Him. So, I mean, how strong do you think you are? Because, I mean, you may be really smart. How smart do you think you are? You may be smart for a human being. You may, be, you may have degrees. You, you, you could have whatever. I mean, you could know everything there is to know about whatever, you, whatever field of work you're in. You could, man, man, listen, you could be smart, but you're smart for a human. You're not smarter than God. And how just conceited we would be to think that we, could, to think that we, would, know, we would know more than God. To think that we would know the right thing, the right thing, whenever we, we and to, what I'm saying is, is like that we don't put our trust in him, that we start putting our trust in what we know, and we start putting our trust in, in, in just in things that, you know, uh, the way that we're living or whatever. Um, but anyway, but you ha I always got to understand that you're in a place of weakness all the time because you're a human being. Um, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 6. Solomon said, you have shown great mercy to your servant, David, my father, because he walked before you in truth and righteousness and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father, David, but I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people, whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. So what's going on here? Solomon says that he's a little child, but Solomon was not a little child here. He was, he was a grown man. But what he's saying is, is like, hey, 
I'm, I'm, he was speaking of his experience. He's saying, I'm inexperienced. He's saying, I'm not qualified. I'm not qualified to do this. Now, if I were, you know, going to pick somebody out to run the kingdom, the king's son would be a good choice because this, the king's son has been there. He, see his, he sees his dad, how he works. His dad tells him things. He just sees how he leads. He gets an idea about what it takes to what it takes and all of the different facets of all the things that you have to deal with. So Solomon would be a great choice. Um, but Solomon didn't think so. And in, in hearing, we, we find the lesson that, that we find we find that God was very pleased with this. We find that because Solomon, what he asked for was wisdom. And then later on, the Lord says, man, you could have asked for anything. But because you asked for wisdom, I'll bless you with everything. Wisdom for his wisdom to lead the people. So we find a we find a, a, a lesson here that says, you know, that whenever we think that somebody that, that feels qualified, that they're the ones qualified, but it's actually the one that doesn't feel qualified that's qualified. Um, Proverbs 11.2 says, When pride comes, then comes shame, but with the humble is wisdom. Now, if I'm like, um, th- let me talk about just weakness. Um, there's, you know, different forms of weakness. And just let me, you know, kind of give an example, and I hope it makes sense of, of a way that you can be kind of presumptuous. Let's say that I'm, um, you know, let's say that that if we are, um, if we're gonna um, save our money and go on a trip, okay, and then we're gonna save, we're gonna save up, and we go, you know, um, you know, okay, we need to save this much out of every check. And then in six months, we'll have this vacation paid for. And then so you start doing it, and you start saving, and you start saving and, and doing and, and saving, and you're doing right and, and everything. Well, you understand that you, you have made plans. And, and listen, you, man, plans are good. <clears throat> plans are, are great. They're fantastic, led by the Lord. But here's the thing. Like, is your, is your trust in the plan? Or is your trust in God? Because if your trust is in God, no matter what happens, no matter what happens, like all of a sudden something happens, you know, uh, <clears throat> something happens, baseball hits the windshield, all of these things, like all these extra bills start coming in, everything's happening, and everything just seems to be snowballing the wrong way, but my faith is in, in the Lord to come through, not in my plan. That money will show up with my faith, in the Lord <clears throat> but if my faith is in my plan it's something totally different you're presuming to know something that you're not qualified to know you're not qualified to know what's around the corner the Holy Spirit is he knows you put your faith in you put your faith in, in him now um, you think that your plans are coming from a place of strength but they're actually coming from a place of pride because they're your plans if you're going to make plans, make them with God. Um, <clears throat> now, we could have a, um, a weakness of righteousness where we think that, you know, if we keep a bunch of rules, God will show up. Um, you know, that God will come through. You could have a weakness of understanding. You don't even know what to do or say in a situation. You could have a, um, um, you think that, <laughs> one time I was up here and, and, praying and this this guy comes up and he'd had a hard time and he'd been going through some things and what happened was he had been a long time without seeing his son because of he had legal trouble rehab things like that right well of course you know when he gets he's been clean for a while but his his ex-wife is not I mean she's not trusting him she's seen him at his worst and so she's not trusting him to be around their son. But she had remarried and things. And he's sitting up here telling me all this, right? And, man, I mean, as he's telling me, I'm like, I have no, I mean, in my head, I'm, I mean, I'm shaking, yeah, yeah. And he's, I have no clue what I'm fixing to tell this guy. And I have no clue how to pray. But I was going to pray. 
had to pray something. And I just prayed, God, tell me what to say. And then I told him, I said, man, I said, your problem is not your, your ex-wife isn't stopping it. It's, the, it's, it's her husband. And he was like, what? I said, I said, man, you've been in rehab and you've been in jail and this guy's been raising your son. And now all of a sudden you get out and you get clean and you're wanting to come in. You're wanting to come in and all of a sudden be the dad. Well, he's been the dad. He's taken up that responsibility. You have to get with him. You have to tell him that you're not threatening him. You have to make sure that he understands you just want to see the kid, that you're not trying to come in and break the family up. That you're and anyway, all of that, and I thought, you know, man, I hope that was good. I mean, it was just a few hours later he called me and said, you're not going to believe this, but he was going to see him that day. I'm not that smart. <clears throat> I mean, I know that was God dropping something in. Well, I mean, it made a difference in this. And, you know, next thing I know, it was just a few weeks. The guy was here at church with the kid. I mean, like, it was just um, amazing. But it was just the, the idea he kept hitting a brick wall with it, you know, because his wife kept saying no. Well, his wife wasn't saying no. The stepdad was. And, um, and I, and to be honest, I don't blame him for what they had been through. But he says... But then you could also have, um, but you could disconnect because, of, because you think that if I'd have thought, let's say that I entered that and I said, Lord, help me. I, hey, tell, me tell me what to say. And then all of a sudden, well, then it worked, right? And then I, he told me and then it worked. And then what happens is if the enemy can't get me to disconnect from a place of weakness, He'll get me to disconnect from a place of pride. Because, he, because all of a sudden he says, he wants to tell me how bad I am and I'm not qualified and all these things. And then all of a sudden, but then whenever you do something, he, 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 like, he puffs you up. And he's like, hey, you're awesome. You're great. Does it? Because now all of a sudden I've gone, I've gone way past and I'm, I'm over here. But so what I'm saying is you got to deflect the glory to God whenever things like that happen. Um, but you could have weakness of, um, of, of what you speak. Um, if you go, like, let's say that you're, um, Dan and Trish were looking at houses, okay? That's a good example. And I'm, I don't know exactly how all that went down and all that, but I'm just going to make a, something. But let's say that you go in and you're looking at houses. You're looking at houses, right? And you go in a house and you love it. Man, everything about it is great. You know, your kids love it, and they're like, oh, that'd be my room, that'd be my room, that'd be, man, but you're trying not to look so eager in front of the realtor, and you're like, cut it, cut it, cut it. Well, then the, then the realtor goes out, right? And then the realtor goes out and leaves you and everybody yourself, and you're like, man, I love this place. I mean, this, this is what we're going to do, da, da, da. And you stand there, and you hold hands, and you pray. You pray, this is, you know, you declare this is our house. You bring up some scriptures, and you just keep declaring that this is your house, this is your house, this is your house. And then as soon as you leave, somebody puts an offer on it and buys it. Well, here's the thing. Like, you were going off of what you knew, Right? Oh, what you, you mean, you were saying the right things, but the Bible says that we don't know what we're supposed to be praying. So as you're standing there, and you're praying, and then you start praying in tongues, the Holy Spirit is praying, do not give them this house. <laughs> I got something better for them. I have something better for them around the corner. So all the things you're praying, you don't know what you're supposed to be praying, but he does. And so you start praying in the Spirit, undoing everything that you just said. But, but hey, but he saved you from some pain because, man, what if that place, if there's something about that place that you don't need. And he's got something better for you in mind. But, here, but if I enter it from a, place of, from a place of that, man, you know, like if I get offended at that, if I'm offended, and I, man, it, it, it cuts my legs off. I mean, if, if, I'm, if I'm offended, but if I'm trusting God, that God has my best interest in mind all the time, if I'm trusting God that he's, that he's always working for me, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm trusting him, then what, do I, then what is this house going to do? I mean, I trust in my Lord that he's got something better. 
which is just, I can't tell you the number of times. I could bring up story after story if, if, if to prove this to you. But, and I don't, I don't know exactly how to say it without s- sounding terrible. But have you ever, like, just finally quit on something and then it happened? I had some friends that, man, they couldn't get pregnant. And the doctor told them they wasn't going to get pregnant. Something anatomically wasn't right. And they needed to adopt. They pray, they, you know, they went and did all this fertility stuff and spent thousands of dollars and finally just went, that's it. We're done. We're not trying anymore. Got pregnant. Three months, I mean, they had three kids now. And that was without the fertility drugs. That was without anything. But what happened was they finally quit. And see, I'm saying quit, but you know what they did? They finally rested. If you've ever held a baby and they're, 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 they're man, they're fighting going to sleep, right? They don't want to go to sleep. And they're just tense and they're just screaming bloody murder and you don't know what in the world, but you know that if they ever for one second stop, if for one second they just, well, sometimes that's what we're doing. Lord, do this, do this. Lord, do this. Lord, I'm believing for you to do this. Lord, I'm believing for you to do this. And he's going, relax. 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 I've got it. And you relax for one second. He's like, now. When you're waiting, when you're waiting for something and you're waiting for God, don't, don't, you don't wait from a place of that I've done so much that I earned it. But you also don't, don't go at it from a place of, Lord, I'm so lowly that, you, that I don't know why you would bless me. You, you get blessed because of him, but you enter it from a place of humility. It's not weakness. It's humility. You enter from a place of, I know that I don't know this. I, don't know, I, I know that I don't know the exact thing. And I think that, and Lord, I think I know the plan you have. I think I see it, and I'm going to follow it. But if it falls apart, I trust you. When it all goes away, whenever it falls, if it, if it crumbles in front of me, I will, I trust you. I trust that you're making a way, that it's all part of a process. Lord, I trust you. So wherever you are today, whatever it is, whatever it is that you, you, you know, you're just about to give up on, that you're just about to do, just Lord, it, look, in everything that you do, you try to come up with these plans and you're reading the right books and you're, and you're saying the right things and you're doing all the right things and you're, do, you're doing the best you know. Trust in him. And for one second, relax. And watch him do something. Just relax and rest and watch him do something. Um, Everybody stand up. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for... um, I thank you for all of these, Lord, Lord, that are here. Lord, Lord, I just thank you for the... The, the, the seed that's planted in each of them, Lord, I thank you that they are your lights for the world, Lord, and we leave here and, and shine forth. Lord, I call things that the, these people are, are, are trusting you for things, Lord, and I just call them into existence now, Lord. I just, I just call them, Lord, and it's through you. It's only by you, Lord. It's only by your strength. It's only by your might, Lord. It's only, it's only through you, Lord, that we, that we receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's going to be, ministry team will be down here. And if you need prayer, something that you've given up on or something that you just want to pray about, come down and get prayer. Come down and get prayer. And if you don't know Jesus, also come down and we'd love to pray with you and share the Lord with you. We just want to bless you today to go out and not only go out in victory, but also just spill on everybody that you come in contact with. And just have a wonderful day. Be blessed.